Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Have you ever had one of those days, James, where you just reach to the t-shirt pile, you pull out the t-shirt and it has a stain on it, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to wear that t-shirt anyways, even though I know there's a stain on it. I call that every day, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why I felt like leading with that, but I am wearing a shirt with a stain. I normally don't, but it was just one of those mornings. I don't think I have a stain, but, yeah. you know, it won't take long until I do. Oh. More importantly, Luke, today we're talking about how it's made. High fructose corn syrup. Or, or I think death liquid, right? <laughs> death syrup? Oh, it should be death, death syrup. For those of us in the industry, like you and I are yeah. now, Luke, Experts. it's called HFCS. Hexfa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I talk about a quick history of husks? I, I, I would want you to because I didn't really do much research on the history. So so I feel like HFCS saves no time over <laughs> high fructose corn syrup. It like, does, really? It does yeah. not. So this year, corn syrup of the very high fructose variety was first produced by Richard O. Marshall and Earl R. Coy. K O O I mm -hmm. uh, in 1957 after they created the enzyme glucose isomeris. Now I get that. Yep, the enzyme no. rearranged the composition of glucose in corn syrup and made it into fructose. And you and I clearly didn't look at the same page. Just oh, good. Just you didn't saying. know any of that information. Good. I did, I did not. <laughs> I liked how you were like agreeing with the, with the stuff I was saying. Like, yep, that's what I copied too. Um, so there's three types of high fructose corn syrup out there, uh, and these are basically named for their fructose content, right? So HFCS-42, 55, and 90. And mm. you guessed it, 42%, 55%, and 90% fructose. That's, it's, it's fructose that's versus glucose, I believe. Correct, for the yeah. most part, and yeah. then just a dash of other stuff. Yeah, and apparently the higher it is, the more like death is involved from, <laughs> from death. you know what i the big, sugar, the big sugar industry is going to be after us and uh, here they are spending big money to sponsor us this episode yeah. thanks a lot luke uh, um is that so your quick history or you got more a little, a little bit more 42 was the first one to be created and it's still used a lot today um HFCS was first marketed in the early 1970s, even though it came out in the late uh, 50s. This was marketed by the Clinton Corn Processing Company, together with a Japanese agency of industrial science and technology. And this is because that enzyme was discovered there in 1965. Um, HFCS was rapidly introduced into all sorts of foods, and most importantly, or at least most well-known probably, into soft drinks uh, in the United States from about 1975 to 85. Uh, soft drink makers like Coca-Cola, go check out our episode on how is Coke made. Uh, and Pepsi, they still use sugar in other nations, which is why it tastes so very good outside of America. Mm -hmm. But in other places like the United States where it's really expensive to buy sugar, or at least more expensive they've replaced it with high fructose corn syrup one of the things i saw and and you didn't mention it in the history uh was that japan apparently there was this really high sugar tax okay and one oh, of and the, that's why one of the impetuses to, ah. to creating high fructose corn syrup was was there a, an alternative rather than sugar that they could produce and you know and, and and be reasonable price and apparently that was um where a lot of this kind of initiated from and then now it's in everything oh my goodness you know what the James. you know the old saying luke the necessity to spend less money is the mother of all invention i right? never <laughs> no is that not the saying I, it, it could be fun fact uh, for you luke shoot in 2010, this is funny, the Corn Refiners Association, the CRA, uh, tried to change the name high fructose corn syrup to corn sugar due to the bad reputation of high fructose corn syrup. In 2012, the Food and Drug Administration said, yeah, nah, nah, you're not going to do that. Nice try, though. So yeah. I that was cute. Yeah. And, and I think what it is is like literally, and I think some of it's valid. Um, in, in the extensive research I did 
yeah, you know, yeah. 45, Expensive. 50 minutes, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, it's really bad for you. And, um, and we'll talk about that. But I, I want to make sure that we talk about like specifically how it's made. That I think would be a great place for us to go next. All righty. So you take corn and you make high fructose corn syrup. The Done. end. Period. Done. Yeah. No, Super no, easy. No, no, no. So, <laughs> so, uh, so these big corn conglomerates. So, so obviously we eat corn on the cob. There's popcorn. There's all these different grades of corn that are made, right? There's hold, corn hold on, hold on. I have to pause you real quick. I, I have this. We might have stolen our information from the same place, but I have the same kind of ridiculous jokes like written into my notes. Like you make it from corn, and that's. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you uh, and I are like tomato, tomato, potato, that's true. potato. So, um, so yeah. So there's different grades of corn. Like there's there's corn that they feed animals. There's corn that that people eat. Um, there's corn that you know neither one eats. And and what they do is there's there they take certain grades of corn that are probably not appropriate for consumption. And rather than throwing this stuff out, what they do with it is they mill it up and they turn it into cornmeal. And that's really, really fine stuff you're used to, right? Everybody knows what cornmeal is. And then they turn this into cornstarch, so they refine it even further. So then once it's turned into um, cornstarch, uh, it then gets turned into a corn syrup. So the glucose ice, 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 isom, you said it before, glucose isomer, the enzyme, uh, are then added uh, to... Um, the syrup and that's how you get the uh hfcs but really specifically there's a multi-step process so the first enzyme is alpha almalize which changes the chains of molecules in cornstarch to shorter chains of sugars called polysaccharides they are that. alpha alamase is uh, industrially produced as a bacterium, so it's a bacteria, usually Bacillus sp, whatever that means, a genetically, uh, and is genetically modified to make it more stable. Hmm, interesting. Next, the polysaccharides are broken down into glucose using an enzyme, the next one called gl glutamalinize. Glutamalinize is produced as a fungus called Aspergillus. Uh, in fermented vats. You love all my vernacular. I know you're digging it because this <laughs> is fun. usually you doing it. This is me not being able to read or spell. What and was the, finally, asp the asper one? Asper, aspergillus, A-S-P-E-R-G-I-L-L-U-S. It's a fungus. That's a fungus, right? That's gross. It's a fungus among us, and that's ferment. That's and they add that, and then finally they add a third en enzyme called glu the glucose isomate. The last one, it was the one you talked, mm -hmm. the one you talked about initially, and this converts the glucose into a mixture of about forty-two percent fructose, fifty-two percent glucose. Then what they do is they start to combine this to get those different grade levels you talked about the 42 the 50 and the 90 or whatever it is um and basically you end up with like k -Row syrup like if, like like so if, if you want to know what corn syrup is like if you oh, go to the store in the so baking gross. section like k -Row syrup is high fructose corn syrup we have that in our house i don't think we use it for baking or anything very often Candy but i making. think yeah, candy making, but I think we had it on hand because our diabetic cat could like oh. drop his blood sugar and you would have that you because you could just kind of like, yeah, jam it in there and then he could bounce back. Um, he eventually didn't bounce back. But <laughs> you have a diabetic I mean, cat. Oh, we did. He's, he's no longer with us. Oh, Sam I'm cat. sorry. That's that's I, that I, was really heartless. And I'm getting I'm getting I'm, PETA on you any minute now. Before we move on, I think you did a great job on how it's made, by the way. Uh, one fun fact, the U.S. is the world's largest corn producer, with Iowa and Illinois growing the most. Have you ever driven through the middle of the country and seen the corn? I used to work uh, with Blue Bunny based in Iowa, oh. and driving from the airport to there was just corn 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 <laughs> it's it's really like it's boring right but it's amazing to see how much nothing there is it is uh, it's, really it's, something it, I, I drove i drove out one time and back and that's the only time i ever did like the big cross-country drive and it was oh, like my. the amount of it, it's just it's mind-boggling like you i didn't know spaces that big could exist where you right? don't see anything else it was it was kind of crazy 
That was when you decided it was a good idea to go hike with the bears by yourself, I did. right? I did. We'll okay. talk about that some other time. Okay. Uh, before we talk about something else, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. I would normally say like Big Corn or whatever that association was, but my guess is they're going to like send people to our house to like hurt us and intimidate put, us. Like the sacks of corn they beat you with, yeah. I assume. Uh, we don't have a sponsor, but if anybody knows Big Corn and if they want to sponsor us, hook us up. Um, we do have a couple shout outs, though. Those are so much better. So I, I apologize already. Oh, no. <laughs> How would you pronounce A-T-T-E? Addy? Okay, we'll go with that. I'm a high school student from Finland, and I have really enjoyed your podcast. I stumbled upon the episode about wacky measurement units where you mentioned the poronkusama. Um, I didn't I didn't remember it, but now I do after I looked it up. Um, it was the first time I heard you mention Finland on the podcast, so that was nice. I, however, got a little offended when Luke claimed that Santa Claus doesn't live in Finland. He's the worst. I assume he means you're the worst, not Santa Claus. Yeah, not Santa, because he's the best. Lots of people come here to visit him every year. It's one of our biggest tourist attractions. That's that's a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then he goes on to explain that Horon Kusama literally translates to peed by a reindeer. And this is actually the distance that a reindeer travels before it has to stop and pee again, oh. which is roughly six miles. And they can't walk and pee at the same time, so they have to take regular potty breaks. And so there you go. That's a uh, wacky unit of measure for all of you. Nice. Go check out those that, episodes. That was a good they were those, great. Those, we yeah. did two of them, right? We because did, yeah. so many. Oh, it's so good. Uh, the next shout out is Jake E. Not Jakey, like I could be Jamesy or you could be Lukey. He's Jake last letter e the letter e i am a 10th grade student and i love listening to your podcast when i'm running or working out so good job jake being in shape <laughs> what were you doing in 10th grade <laughs> not working out 12 ounce curls um <laughs> i'm currently working towards my pro this hurts my brain i'm currently working towards my private pilot's license and once i get it i wouldn't mind flying you to one of those famous mud ducks games so that's very generous okay. jake i like yeah. that so i feel really bad about myself right now right so i emailed jake back and i'm like yo can you even drive a car yet and yeah. you're allowed to fly a plane like i couldn't in 10th grade so that's real interesting i had uh, no my judgment in 10th grade no, you didn't want me behind the wheel of anything. Uh, my goal is to have a degree from the United States Navy Academy nice. in aerospace engineering and to become a naval aviator. Oh. And if that doesn't work out, I found some great backup colleges thanks to you guys. I'd love you to do an episode on the perfect hamburger expanding on your pizza episode. I'm down with a perfect hamburger. I, I told him that you would be. Um, we did the so steak before. Check that one out. But I don't think yeah. we did burger. Yeah, okay. he, he ends it very nicely. Love, love, love listening to you guys. Keep up the great work. But you know what, Jake? You've made me feel so bad about myself. Like <laughs> yeah. he's like got this whole plan, like pilot's license, Naval Academy for aerospace. And like, yeah. I didn't even know like engineering was a thing till I like stumbled into college. So and, first like, of all, it out. Naval Academy is awesome. Annapolis is like, oh, I've yeah, you there. love Annapolis. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm big on all of the military academies. So uh, so Jake, definitely like look us up whenever you graduate. <laughs> Sponsor us. Um, any of you who want to sponsor us, who has a company with just too much money that they don't give to me, um, if you have episodes you want us to cover, if you want to talk about high fructose corn syrup, anything like that, go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share. We love the reviews. Make sure you hit up the Unprofessional Engineering store for overpriced t-shirts and stickers. And as always, you can tell your smart devices to play the Unprofessional Engineering podcast anytime that was great you were such a good radio voice ah oh, thank man. you um so i have a quick section here i'd like to cover luke where do we find hooks um it's used in almost every packaged food and soft drink which is terrible because it's awful for you 
Um, at least in America, that's the case. Case. Uh, so HFCS has replaced more expensively priced sugars, as we've mentioned, uh, but it's used primarily in the beverage industry, 41% of it, processed food manufacturers, 22%, cereal and bakery products, 14%, Multiple use food manufacturers. I don't know what that means. It's very vague. 12%. The dairy industry at 9%, which is scary. What are yogurt. they using it for? Oh, yogurt's so Sweetened gross. Yogurts. Oh, I, love, the, I make homemade yogurt. It's the best. It's so gross. Confectionery <laughs> industry, 1%. So not so bad there. Um, more specifically, though, Luke, the 42% variety is used in beverages, processed foods, cereals, and baked goods. 55 is more of those like really monster energy drinks and uh, high end soft drinks or high content soft drinks. And then like F HFCS 70, so not one of the big ones, but they like dilute the high one down mm -hmm. to that, is used for a lot of jelly fillings, like a really high amount of them. So that's interesting. And so one last scary piece of information, I guess it's not scary if you don't care, uh, consumption of high fructose corn syrup in the U.S., uh, actually, this isn't scary, it's good, has been declining slowly and steadily since 1999. This is still bad. In 99, 37.5 pounds were consumed each year per person. In 2012, the number was down to a mere 27.1 pounds per person. So that's like a 10 pound drop. That's You're pretty good. Stealing my fun facts. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't that's mean right. to. No, no, that's all right. So uh, I think we got to talk about the good because, like, obviously, this all happened for a reason. And you know, I, 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 I love I, that you're a silver lining guy. I am a silver lining kind of guy. Uh, thank you for noticing that. Uh huh. But so there, there is. It's tough to say good because what we know about it, <laughs> Less but, bad. But, but, but I'm going to try. Uh, so the reason why high fructose corn syrup was developed was number one, they had these storehouses of crappy corn that you couldn't give to people. Maybe there was more than enough for the animals, whatever it was. And they needed a way to number one, use this corn and then there was also demand for cheap sweetener so they're like oh okay let's let's make corn syrup so number one corn syrup is so much cheaper than like sugar in the raw or just like plain old sugar or other types of sugars it's it's crazy crazy cheap um it also has better flavor enhancers so corn syrup has a sweeter sweet taste than sugar and you can put less of it in, even though it's still pretty terrible for you, uh, compared to, you know, regular sugar or other uh, sweeteners. Uh, super long shelf life, like that Cairo syrup that you have in your pantry right now, you it's probably five years old, and I bet it'll still be good in another five years. So super stable uh, shelf life. Um, it's super consistent, you know, sometimes you can like, like raw sugar in particular, or other sweeteners, there can be variations in the sweeteners. It's the good thing about science, right? Um, and uh, they work really well whenever you're adding them to acidic foods. Uh, again, just because of the chemistry of high fructose corn syrup. So if you're adding it to, uh, like if you're putting in uh, syrups or you're putting in uh, sauces, it, it holds up really well in a sauce. A lot of times if you put sugar in a sauce. I don't want separate. sugar in a sauce. But, but if you put sugar in, it'll separate and potentially burn. You throw in a drop of Cairo syrup, it's nice and silky and smooth and extra sweet. Ooh, um, so you see why? So it's, it's good in certain reasons, um, but, mm. but it really gets outweighed by the bad. So do you want to start the bad? or would I it... mean, I'd love to talk about some of the bad. I'm really a glass half empty kind of guy, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? I'll start. You can, you can jump in too. Please. Because the body processes high fructose corn syrup in a different fashion than it does normal sugars, the consumption of this stuff alters the way metabolic regulating hormones function. So that doesn't sound great. It so research, <laughs> research indicates that sweetener may reduce leptin concentration in the body. And leptin is a hormone produced by the body that helps with weight control and mm -hmm. appetite control. Satiation, so not, I think is yes. the word. So not only does it mean 
you're gaining weight. It also means your body's not figuring out that it's not actually hungry. So then you're eating more on top of it. And you're probably eating more high fructose corn syrup. So you're gaining more weight and still not getting full. So that is a pretty bad thing. Luke. It's it's terrible to be Tur- terrible is is also correct. Um, in addition, unlike sugars, high fructose corn syrup does not suppress the production of ghrelin, which is a hormone that stimulates appetite. Furthermore, it encourages the body to store more fat. So that's not great, especially for all of you doing crunches out there. Those things are miserable. And now you have to do even more because of this high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. Um, It forces the liver to emit fat into the bloodstream. And that's what causes this fat buildup. That doesn't sound healthy. Um, And oh, The sweetener increases your desire for sweet tasting things. So it's, well, we don't talk about crack on this show, but it sure sounds like (laughs) something you don't want to be ingesting. Um, what's a, what sort of bad things do you have to talk about? righty. So, so first of all, I, I want to preface this, this, this was like WebMD Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic. This wasn't like, you know, just people's opinions. Like these are like legit, relatively legitimate, you know, medical outlets like Cleveland Clinic and Mayo Clinic dot org. James says it tastes good. Uh, Yeah. So uh, so this is a quote. Fructose goes straight to your liver and starts a fat production factory. Dr. Hey, hey, man says some doctor, uh, hey, hey, his last hey. name is Hey, man. Uh, he said it triggers the production of triglycerides and cholesterol. Like it's, it's the sugar in it's the fructose and high fructose corn syrup that actually gives you problems with your cholesterol. It's not the fat that you're eating. It's not you're eating a big juicy steak with some beautiful marbleization in it. It's you put a one sauce on it, or you put some or you do something else with it that has high fructose corn syrup. And that's what is causes the problems. It's not this. It's not the fat and the steak. It's the corn syrup. Have you ever taken one of those juicy steaks and injected it with caro syrup and then grilled that sucker no, up? That's... Oh, buddy. <laughs> no, I've never done this, but I, <laughs> I suggest someone get back to me on how that goes. Oh my goodness. That's terrible. Uh, so he also goes on to write that uh, high fructose corn syrup uh, in high doses, which Americans consume. Oh, uh, so high. It actually punches holes in your intestinal lining that cause what's called leaky gut. <laughs> he said, and I've heard of this before. I've, yeah, there's all he kinds would. Of, if you're on Facebook, leaky gut's like the only ad that pops up. So he explains that this allows foreign food and proteins and bacteria proteins to enter your bloodstream, triggering inflammation, weight gain, and the type 2 diabetes. Diabetes. Not good. Like, um, it's terrible for you. Yeah, it's awful. So I saw a Princeton University study. We don't usually talk about Princeton on here all that often. But anyways, they did a study that showed rats with access to high fructose corn syrup gained way more weight. That was the term they used way with a bunch of I'm A's, sure they did. more weight than those who had access to table sugar, even though their overall caloric intake was the same. And the long-term consumption of uh, high fructose corn syrup led to abnormal increases in body fat, especially in the abdomen region, mm-hmm. and a rise in circulating blood fats. Um, yeah, so that's not good. And so that's one of the leading causes, they say, to the obesity trends in the United States. Mm-hmm. Now, this, Luke, will probably come as a shock to you. This, I mean, this is going to floor you. But the corn... Refiners Association, the lobbying group for the corn industry, disputes these claims and says, nah, man, this is no worse for you than sugar is. Don't worry about what Princeton and all of the studies are telling you. This is okay for you. So anyways, there you go. The corn lobbyists say it's good. That's good. Before we go on with anything else, that's good, Luke. You know what's really good? This week's Luke's rant. Okay, so you kind of stole my rant. We're going to play a game. What do you mean? Uh, because you kind of said it, but you know, so we're going to play. I can't help it. I'm so well educated. You are well educated. So we're going to play a game, and you're going to tell me if you like this, and then I will tell you if it's bad for you because it's high fructose corn syrup. So, do you like cookies and cream ice cream? Yeah, obviously. High fructose corn syrup. It's going to kill you. Do okay. you like baby Ruth bars? Baby Ruth? Yes. High fructose corn syrup. Going to kill you. Mm. 
You ready? Do you like any type of packaged cupcake, like a hostess, like pre-packaged, like I like am sweets. for sure a ho ho guy over a Twinkie guy. Okay, so example: chocolate hostess cupcakes, all made with high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> They're delicious. One of my friends actually reached out about the Twinkie comments that I made because the originals had that banana cream, and he thinks they would be good, and he's wrong. But continue. Uh, do you drink Mountain Dew, A and W root beer, or Coca Cola? Yes. Yes. High fructose corn yes. syrup. I All love Mountain Dew. Uh, my sister-in-law does not like that anyone likes Mountain Dew because so she's a like, dentist. God, it's good. Do you like juice boxes? I mean, no. So like when you're at like a nephew or niece's birthday party, you don't steal a Capri Sun and down it. That might have happened before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> High fructose corn syrup, killing it. Uh, let's see. How am I alive? I, exactly. So McDonald's, do you like apple pies? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> It's literally, there's no apples in it. It's all high fructose corn <laughs> syrup and crust. Uh, sauces, condiments, breakfast foods, like preserves, jams, bread, cracker, pancake syrup, applesauce. Like literally everything we like as Americans has high fructose corn syrup in it. So yeah. So we, so I don't know about you, and I don't know, if, I don't know you, I don't know if you and the wife are, you know, into reading labels, but we really no. do try to not do high fructose corn syrup. Brianna's a good label reader, and then I just assume she's taking care of me on that front, but Meanwhile, she's yeah. trying to kill you. Yeah, I mean, I'm lucky to be alive based off of your list of things. So yes, you are lucky that. to be alive. Um, what else do you got, Luke? So uh, the last thing I have is all about the differences between like sugar and like why one is worse than the other. And then also like fructose that is actually in fruit. Okay. I had one section that said, is it safe? Oh no, go there first for sure. Well, I mean, I feel like we spent 25 minutes on already telling everyone. Yeah, probably not. So the quote was, we're not aware of any evidence that there is a difference in safety between foods containing high fructose corn syrups and foods containing similar amounts of other sweeteners, but all of the studies kind of point to, yeah, it's not so good for you. So there's no official stance that it is worse for you. That being said, it's worse for you. All right, continue on, Luke. All righty. So the difference between uh, fructose and high fructose con corn syrup is... It's that scale that you talked about. So the the lowest level of high fructose corn syrup that you're going to find in like a package is going to be that HFCS like 55 or 45 42. is the most common one. Um, even though they're pretty much identical in chemical structure, like the fructose that's like in an apple or an orange, the okay. challenge is it's the dose that you're getting. So like you would have to eat like multiple apples and multiple oranges or like, you know, clusters and clusters and clusters of grapes to get the same. Is that what a grape is? I thought it was a bunch. No, a cluster. Is it a cluster? Grape? Cl I don't know. Okay, continue on. I, I feel like we're talking about things that aren't <laughs> relevant here. Um, grape cluster. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the biggest one. Oh. And then with sugar, uh, I think you may have mentioned this. Um, and this one is all about um, uh, the the difference between high fructose corn syrup and just regular sugar. So the biggest difference is that high fructose corn syrup does that. You did. Oh, you did say it. The appetite suppressant um, and regular sugar is processed. It doesn't have the insulin inhibitor because uh, the high fructose corn syrup suppresses that oh um, okay yeah so big differences there yeah i saw that like something about the sweetness and this is just more of a fun fact that fructose itself is way sweeter than high fructose corn syrup which is a bit sweeter than sucrose but that's way sweeter than glucose so this is why we love this stuff so much it's sweet and delicious right sure it's gonna kill me tomorrow and it makes you hungrier yeah it does make you hungrier um how to cut down on high fructose corn syrup luke First, have your wife read the labels for you because you're too lazy to do it. Second, have Luke berate you and tell you everything you eat is bad. 
Third, oh, this this was actually one. Read ingredient labels, maybe do something else. Cut down on sodas and other sweetened drinks. Drink water instead. Add berries and lemons and limes or cucumbers to your water to make them more flavorful. Do you do cucumber water, Luke? Oh, I love me some cucumber water. Yeah, I think I remember you drinking like a whole like water container thing did at a hotel. See, did you ever it. see uh, the other guys, Mark Wahlberg? And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and the guy kept tricking them with the flavored waters. Uh, <laughs> you want tickets um, in the flavored water? <laughs> snack on whole foods like nuts and fruits instead of cookies and candy. It's just telling me to eat healthier. This is a lame list. And go with homemade baked goods instead of store-bought ones. That's a good one because not only do they taste better, but they're better for you or less bad for you. Uh, the American Heart Association, Luke, recommends that women get no more than 100 calories or six teaspoons of added sugar and men no more than 150 or nine, te nine teaspoons of added sugar per, per day. Total to that, sugar. Total. To put that in perspective for you, a 12 ounce cola, they call it, we'll call that a Pepsi or a Coke, has 10 and a quarter teaspoons of sugar. And orange soda has, oh, I love orange soda, has 13 teaspoons. So you're allowed like half a can of pop a day mm -hmm. and then no other sugar. And you wonder why like obesity in the United States is just What's like the big McDonald's drink rocketing. Like... Yeah, it's like a garbage can full of yeah. soda that they give you. It's <laughs> ridiculous. And, and here's the crazy thing. Like, and I know we're getting here towards the end, but like, it is so much cheaper. The other thing too that I read about is the the rate of obesity and you know I'll call it food addiction, you know whatever you want to call it, um, is is disproportionately worse for people that have lower incomes because buying healthier food that. Is yeah. that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup, that's more natural, that is using like raw sugar or doesn't have all the extra additives, it's way more expensive. So the the rate of obesity, heart attacks, like all the things that high fructose corn syrup cause health problems for, you know, it really affects the the folks that can't afford to buy better, healthier foods and drinks. Um, now, that doesn't mean... I'm not giving those individuals, you know, carte blanche to go no, I drink, you know, two, two, two liters of Pepsi per day as the authority um, on these things, right? as the authority on these things. But like, it, it would, it would be really great if like the food industry and food producers could somehow come up with a way to, to make the food they're already making healthier maybe switch from high fructose corn syrup to just regular sugar, reduce some of that, you know, diabetes, the heart issues that are happening, some obesity. Uh, and I know it's, it, it's difficult and it costs money, but um, it's just unfortunate that um, sometimes people can't help the food they have access to. So. I agree. And for those of you who can, I still encourage you to inject your steak with high fructose <laughs> corn syrup and let us know how that experiment goes. No. Uh, Anything else you want to add? No, in here? that's all I got. Awesome. Well, hopefully you all learned something about the production of high fructose corn syrup, how it's made, if it's good for you, if it's bad for you, what it's doing to your body, why it's doing it to your body and why it's so tasty. Uh, if any of you have anything you want to talk to us about, anything like that, why don't you go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And until next time, see ya.